Hello. Testing. One, two, three. Two, three, one. All right. Froze last time. I don't know why. Hopefully it doesn't do that again. I'll check it. So uh, we didn't get that far. But if you go online on eBay, you'll see these for $25. 20 to 25 bucks, And they won't have... Uh, they might even be a little bit cheaper, but they won't have this. You can get them with this extra uh, lump on the end, and that is just space for a uh, power supply. And then you can plug it into the wall. But if you're going to run it off a of DC, you don't need that anyway. Um, I uh, yeah, So you can get the smaller unit. Now, this size unit only does... Yeah, it's working. This size unit only does, um, I think it says it's 50 watts, but really you want to keep it down to about, uh, probably like 40 watts of charge. So if you've got a, a 18 volt battery, then you can only charge it at two amps. So it'll take two hours to charge this battery. If it's a four amp battery, I don't know how many amps this is. It's probably not four amps. Probably not, you know, it's probably, it's probably two amps. Um, but, uh, but most of your DeWalt batteries are going to be like 4 amp, 20 volt batteries. So, the display on this one's very difficult to read. Um, if, you, if you buy a new one, it'll be crystal clear, totally easy to read. Yeah, why, why don't I buy a new one? Because this one works. That's why. And it still works. Testament to the engineering in this thing. Uh, newer ones may have sl slightly different firmware in them. A uh, little bit newer firmware, but uh, but the, the basics are all the same. So what I'm going to do is that fan that you hear running, yeah, the fan that you hear running, I'm going to turn it off. It's a little blower to keep my charge controller cool, but it's only showing 12 volts right now, so we're fine. So I'm going to turn that on, and then I'm going to turn off my headlight, and I'm going to zoom, well, I'm going to zoom in on the display, so hopefully you'll be able to see it. Kind of see it. Bring it down a little closer. Okay, and you can see it says nickel metal hydride charge, manual, current, one amp. And so what you do is when you turn it on, it'll go back to the last charge setup that you had it on before. Um, so... I had it charging at one uh, one amp. Uh, the man doesn't really mean anything. Uh, there's a book that comes with these, but so what you do is use your typical battery. Uh, whether it's nickel metal hydride or lithium ion doesn't really matter. If it's lithium ion, it'll have an internal balancer, so you won't really have to worry about you know balancing the cells or anything. Uh, it'll still have these same connectors on the outside, and they'll be for blades. So you slide this in, it locks in place, but You'll have a positive, you'll have a negative, and you'll have a T. And that's for the temperature. Let's if I get that on camera. Ah, positive, negative, and T. And if you look in here, those are got the receivers for the blades to charge it with. This is marked DC positive, but there's nothing. I don't think there's a, yeah, there's nothing there. So ignore that stamp on the mold. This is positive, negative, and T. Now, the only caveat with using one of these is uh, the temperature part. So on your chargers where you lock these in on the AC ones, they'll have a thing to check the battery temperature. Like if you have only two batteries and you're doing a lot of aggressive work, um, you'll put one in the unit and you'll put one in the charger and then you'll swap them. The problem with that is the battery is already hot from being in the from being used and now you're charging it and you're getting it hotter and then you're putting it back in the uh you know the drill and you're getting it hotter again it's much better to have to to get like uh the original uh like a dewalt uh sawzall or drill with one battery uh the dewalt charger and uh then go and buy the chinese made generic lithium batteries that are actually really good there are some really good generic DeWalt batteries. They cost 50 bucks for two of them. 
The DeWalt battery is going to be stamped as a 5 amp battery, and the Chinese ones are going to be stamped as 4. But uh, so you will get a little bit more runtime out of the DeWalt, but that's neither here nor there. It'll work, it'll work just fine. So what it will have is you'll have one in the charger and then one cooling off and one in use. And then when you uh, switch to the next one, you'll take the cold one and you'll um, – when you rotate batteries, you'll put the cold one in the drill. You put the hot one from the drill in the charger and then – the charger has a, a fan blowing air over the battery, so it'll slow down the charge rate. So these units do have an optional, sometimes it comes with the units, sometimes you have to order it separate. They have an optional plug uh, cable that goes on the side where it says temperature sensor. And you can take that temperature sensor and you can kind of put it on the battery, I guess. You know, there's actually an internal temperature sensor in the battery. That's what I'm saying is there's really no, you know... It's not the same thing. It's a little thermistor, and you could shove it in the battery if you're really concerned about temps. But most of the time, you can either just, you know, if the battery's warm, charge at a lower rate. So if you would charge a cold battery at, say, 1C or 4 amps, so it would be charged an hour if it was a 4 amp pack, uh, you charge it at uh, half C. So it's charging at 2 amps, and it takes 2 hours to charge. So also with having, like, three batteries is you can take a little bit longer to charge the battery and even though the fast chargers can charge in 45 minutes uh, it's better to charge them a little bit slower that's the maximum charge rate that the battery will take like 1.5 C but it's better if you could charge it a little bit lower a uh, slower like at 1 C 1 1 C meaning in one hour you get the full capacity of the, of the battery so if it's a 4 amp battery, you're putting 4 amps in it at whatever the voltage is. So, Okay, so that's how that works. But what this is for is you can take, um, let me go look for some tape. Tippity, tippity tape, I'll be right back. Since I find me some tape, here we go. Find me some tape. So when you go online to search for these, you look for a B6 charger. That's what these are generally called. They have faster ones, and they also have ones that can charge multiple packs off of one source. So you can upgrade from there. But this is the very basic charger that can go, like I said, up to 50 watts. So if you had a 20-volt battery, you could push about 2.5 amps into it. Um, and then, you know, if it's cold or you put a fan on here, you can probably push a little bit more current through it. So it comes with probes and a variety of connectors for the other end that you can plug for different RC battery packs. But you're not going to use that. You're going to put that aside and get your $10 digital meter out and take the probe plugs off of it. So these are just off of a basic multimeter that I've also had for a long time. And you plug them into the connector on here. A little, a little loose. Everything's a little old. And then you take the other ends and you plug it into the connectors on the battery. Like that. Now, for your DeWalt battery packs and all your modern ones, you're going to set this for lithium ion. But in this part, I'm going to set it for nickel metal hydride uh, or actually NICAT. I think this is actually a NICAT. Yeah, this is a NICAT. So you always want to look. It'll say the chemistry on the battery. So I'll have to set this for NICAD, but the lithium ions very similar, and I'll go through that setup. So that's all you do. You shove them in there uh, and um, I turn off my headlight so we can see the display again. Hopefully that's visible. Looks like it is. Nickel metal hydride charge. It says charge, and then it has man, and then it says current one. So 
since this is a nickel metal hydride, I want to back out. So there's always there's four buttons along the bottom. So you, it's very intuitive. Once you get the hang of it, it's very intuitive. You push the left button, and it goes to program select, and you just keep pushing it, and it'll rotate through the programs. NICAD, PB is lead, save data, load data, user set program, and LiPo. So if you were using a lithium ion, a modern lithium ion pack, it might say LiPo, it might say lithium ion. If you have the newer firmware, I'll, sh I'll show you why that's important. This is an old charger and you you'll also have a newer firmware on it. For the time being, I'm going to set NICAD. And then I'm just going to hit the rightmost button. That's to go forward into the menu tree. It says NICAD charge man current 0.1 amp, so 100 milliamp here. So I was probably charging like a toothbrush, electronic toothbrush or something. So I'm just going to hit this button one more time, the right button, and then I'm going to use the middle two buttons to scroll up and down. And I'm going to go to, um, say, 1 amp. Okay, that's really pretty low, but I'm going to go to 1 amp, and I'm just going to push the rightmost button to confirm. And now when this whole thing powers down, it'll go right back to this mode. So literally, if you unplug this when you're done um, or you need to use the battery, so you you know, you know hit the leftmost button to cancel the charge and unplug things and go to use the battery or whatever, when, you're, when, you, when you come back to it, you can plug everything back in. It's going to go right back. It's going to go right back to this, um, to this menu. So once you've got it set and you're using the same type of pack over and over again, you can just go back to the menu and do it again. So you just push and hold the button now and it says battery check. So it checks the connections, checks the chemistry of the battery here on the right side. And I'll try to zoom in a little bit more. Again, this, this display is hard to see. It's, it's just this display on the unit that you would get. It wouldn't have this problem. On the right hand side, it shows the battery voltage. In the middle, it shows how many amps it's putting into the battery. On the left, it shows the chemistry. On the bottom left, it shows charge, which is what it's doing. There's a timer and there's the amount of milliampers that have been put into the battery. So left to its own devices, it's going to vary this amperage rate up and down while it checks the battery and puts charge into it and so on and so forth. Now, if it's in the very beginning of the charge, you can push this confirm button again and you can increase, increase the ampere rate or decrease it. But once it's been running for, I think, a minute, you can't change that maximum number. Now, it went down to zero because it's checking the battery again. It wants to make sure that the battery is safe to put a charge into it. And on the lithium side of this thing, you're when you're charging like a DeWalt, a modern DeWalt pack, for instance, or another vendor, uh, Makita or... Uh, Milwaukee, Milwaukee, you'll have lithium ion here instead of NICAD. But otherwise, it'll look about the same. And of course, you can definitely do two amps charge on the lithium ion. And anyway, when this is done, it'll go a couple of times to let you know. It's pretty loud to let you know the charge is done. And if there's an error, it will also go and let you and let you know on here like connection break. So if I pull the cord out of here, it'll say connection break. So if that happens, you just push the leftmost button and it takes you back to the charge screen. You plug the cable back in. I want to make sure I plug it in the right spot. Okay, and then you just push the button again. Battery check weight. And then I'm just supplying this with uh, anywhere between 11 to 18 volts. So if this drops below, like say 11 volts, it will stop charging your battery. So it won't exhaust your main battery, wherever you're getting your 12 volt source from, in order to charge your drill. So um, I'm going to go out of this and I'm going to show you how to set some of the other features. So I'm going to hit the leftmost button that cancels the charge, leftmost button again to get to the program select menu, and just keep hitting it until I get to user set program. I'm going to hit the right button. Now on this screen it says LiPo, voltage type 3.7. I'm going to press the button 
and it's going to say 3.6 and change to lithium ion. Well, since this charger was released, lithium ion batteries went up to 3.7 volts too. So if you wanted to charge a modern lithium ion battery with this particular older one, you would set it to LiPo. And so it would say LiPo in the menu, but it's really a newer lithium ion. The newer, the newer versions of this charger uh, take that into account. So it may actually say um, something else here like lithium ion, but it's the voltage that you're looking at. And it'll also charge lithium ferrous batteries, which I don't even think that they're, I don't think that's referring to lithium ferrous phosphate. I think that's referring to an older chemistry. But uh, so 3.7 for typical lithium ion batteries these days. I'm going to go to the right again. So the middle two buttons I can go left and right in the menu tree with, okay? So for the lithium technologies, the check time is 12 minutes. You can just leave that at default. You don't have to change that. The, the, the uh, nickel metal hydride sensitivity, the peak uh, per cell is 12 millivolts. Again, you don't have to change that. NICATS, okay, this USB temperature select, temperature cutoff, 60 degrees centigrade. So you can set, if you plug the temperature probe in here and you put it on your battery, you can set the temperature cutoff at whatever you want. I'm not using it, so it's set at 60 degrees. But if I pushed enter, I can toggle, I can turn USB on or off. So I can say USB, because this does have a USB mode too. There, I can change the temperature cutoff to 55 degrees, say. So anyway, that's how you do it. So it has two modes for this port, either USB for logging or temperature probe. Can't do both. Maybe the newer models can do both. Waste discharge time. Again, you don't have to change that. Safety timer is interesting. So regardless, sorry about the focus. Focus. Safety timer off 250 minutes. If you hit enter, you can turn it on, and then you can set the number of minutes. That's the maximum number of minutes that it will charge for before it cuts itself off. So if you knew consistently that your DeWalt batteries were uh, 4 amp batteries at 20 volts, and you were going to charge them at half C, and it was going to take you two hours to charge a battery, or you're going to charge them at 1 C, it's going to take you, um, you'll need a bigger charger to charge them at 1 C. To put four amps at 20 volts, that's 60 watts. I would suggest getting the bigger version of this charger. Um, just has better heat sinks in it and stuff. It's physically a little bit bigger, but the, the firmware is the same. So if, you, if you're going to do that, you would want to go, well, it's going to take me an hour to charge those batteries. So you might set the safety timer for 70 minutes. So if it goes, if it takes more than an hour plus what is that 15 or 20 percent it will t turn itself off and it'll tell you it's got to the safety timeout capacity cutoff is kind of the same thing you can turn it on and you can set the number of milliamp hours by like increments of 10 milliamp hours it's very fine so if it was a four amp battery you might scroll this down and set it to four and a half amps because you know you're not going to put more than more than that into the battery. I, I this thing is super dependable, so I, I don't use this capacity meter because I switch between battery chemistries all the time and sizes and stuff. And sometimes I'm charging a little lead acid gel cell and sometimes I'm charging a, a tool battery or whatever, it doesn't matter. So then uh, key beep, every time you push a key, it will beep unless you turn this off. So when you first get it, it'll probably beep at you and you want to turn that off because it's annoying. The buzzer is the thing at the end where it tells you that it's completed or there's a connection break. This is also very interesting here. This is the input power low cutoff. So right now, even though it says it'll take 11 volts on here, it'll actually go down to 10. I don't think you can go lower than that. Yeah, you can go down to 10. So if you don't want to discharge your main system, below a certain level, you could set it to say 11. And, it, and, and if, it, if the input voltage drops too low, it'll stop charging the battery. 
and then it cycles back to the main thing. So it says lithium polymer here, but the more important thing is it says lithium and it's 3.7 volts. This unit was built at a time where it just assumed all lithium polymer was 3.7 and all lithium ion was 3.6 which it was at one time, but I think they're three, they're all 3.7 now. So when you go through this menu here, the part that says lithium polymer battery will change. It'll say lithium ferrous or lithium ion, depending on what you picked in the other menu. So lithium po polymer charge, again, we're, we're actually charging lithium ion. Uh, we can hit enter. We can select the amperage. Again, with the 20 volt batteries, it's self adjusting. It knows uh, I think it has an auto mode. Let's let's see. I don't have a lithium battery to plug it in. I'm set it at 1.5 amps, but you would set it to like say two, maximum of two. I think there's yeah there's an there's a full auto mode on here where it knows uh, where it'll be able to determine what the um, how many cells are stacked together inside your unit. So for like an 18 20 volt battery, you're talking about. Um, trying to think how they, the actual running voltage of those 20 volt uh, DeWalt batteries is like 18 volts when, when you actually got a load on them. So uh, it would be, uh, what is that? Um, one, well here, we can just count it up actually. There, you would use this setting here, 18.5, five cell. So what it is is five 3.7 lithium cells in series inside the battery make up the 18 volts but like i said if you're not sure you can set it to auto i just really frequently charge just a single lithium cell at 3.7 volts that's why it was already set to that but you can set it to auto you hit enter and then you just hit enter again and it'll go back exactly to the charge menu that we saw here battery check it'll say lithium polymer the amperage will go up and down and the voltage will go up and down and it'll count and show you how many milliampers it put into the battery and how long it's been charging for. It's it's really simple. It has a few more features I'm not going to go over, but that's the basics on it. So let me turn on my light, which is going to make it impossible to see what the thing is. It comes with car battery clamps, but I use Dean's connectors, and we'll go over that too because I think that's important. It's a... Um, it's a connector that's polarized. This is the positive and this is the negative. So when you're soldering together, make sure you observe the polarity when you're soldering the side. Let's see if we get it together. There. When you're soldering the side, observe the polarity. This is the positive and this is the negative. And they just slide in and out. Oh, one of the problems with Dean's connectors is because this isn't guarded. If you throw it in your box of junk, you can get... Um, crap on here and you, and and then if it gets on here then when you plug it into the receptacle side it'll get that dirty too and that's kind of a pain in the butt so here's another one i did too again everything low voltage was deans so the other problem too is sometimes you can run into issues where you have potentially power from both sides and you don't want a side that has power to it shorting out like brushing up against some metal or something so the newer kind of connector that's used a lot is what's called an XT60. Got to find an XT60 to show you because I don't know where I put them. These are the male sides of the XT60. So this is a male side of a Dean's, but this is a male side of an XT60. See the difference? This side, it's not marked on here. That's fine. okay. This side is always negative. The side that's got the little funny uh, shape to it. This side's always positive. So you got to again make sure you observe that when you um, when you're soldering them. Uh, I don't like the XT60s as much because they're so small and I have such big hands. And so um, my suggestion is to go to the XT90 size, which... Oh, here's the female side. I can show you a female and a male. Here's a male. 
and here's a female. And you can see how this is protected from shorting out. You put them together and they lock together. Now I like the Dean's connector more for this because pulling on this is really hard to get these apart. And you only have so much area to grab to pull on these things. So I haven't actually used these except once. The Deans come apart much easier and that's good for a strain relief. You know, if you happen to knock some wires or something, it'll just come apart. Like laptop chargers. This thing can run off of most laptop chargers. So I've wired a lot of mine. I've cut the end off and then rewired it with a female to a male Dean's connector. And that way, if I knock the charging cable, it just pulls itself apart and doesn't do any damage. But I'm going to show you a... There was somebody with a little penis. Bigger the muffler, the literally the penis. So this is XT90. It's more for like man size hands because you can really get a grip on it to pull it apart. And you can use like up to eight gauge wire, I think, with these. So you can have a very heavy gauge wire on this side and then just a lighter like a 16 gauge on the other side. And they go together the same way as the XT90. But, or as the XT60, but I actually find these are easier to pull apart than the XT60. Not just because you get more grip space, but because they're not so damn tight. So I much prefer to use these. And the other advantage is these guys come with these little hats. So, sorry about getting washed out. So you put the wires that you're going to solder through here first, and then you solder them onto the end, and then when you're done, this snaps over the end to protect those connectors. The XT60 doesn't have that. So I think these are far superior. So if you're going to do any high amperage connection, these are the way to go. They're economical to buy sets of these. And they come in these little bags with two hats and a male and a female connector. And you usually buy like 10 sets at a time for like 10 bucks or something. They're, they're pretty cheap. So that's what I use for a lot of my connectors. And going forward, I'll probably use a lot more of these. The Dean's connectors, I would say they're good for up to 10 amps at 12 volts. So even 10 amps at 20 volts is perfectly okay. They just, they get dirty. I got to clean them there. And if they get dirty enough, you'll get a bad connection and, you know, they won't work. But you can clean them out with a Q-tip or whatever. It's not the end of the world. They're certainly a convenient way to make a universal interchange between your 12 volt items that you have. And that's how that works. Again, this unit is 20 bucks, 25 bucks, minus whatever shipping. And then you could just take your probes off of your generic multi-tester and plug them into the unit and plug the other ends into the battery just like that shove them in the ports and like i said if it's a lithium ion it has an internal balancer so you don't have to this thing has balancer connections on it here for balancer wires you know if you have an rc pack it'll have a balancer and you'll plug it in here and then there's circuitry in here to balance the cells in the charger but um the modern battery packs have balancers inside of them and the circuitry inside of them. That's how you can push that button on the end and see how much power is left in the pack. It has a, a whole circuit inside of itself. It's not just batteries. So it has a balancer. All you have to do is supply it with power, and that's enough to charge it.